Hello again guys and welcome back to uh, House of Devlin, I'm Big Al Devlin and today I'm going to really just give you a sort of progress update on my sort of physical status so to speak, um, physically fit, healthy, goes out to the gym but there are some issues um, which I'm going to have to tackle um, and I just thought I'd tell you what I'm going to be doing. Um, and I'll show you the stuff when it arrives. Um, but basically, uh, two years ago, I was in a car crash um, with my girlfriend, who was a passenger, and I was a driver. Um, we were struck from behind by a lorry, um, carrying 35 t tons. Uh, we were stationary in traffic, and it hit at 52 miles per hour, if I remember correctly. As you can imagine, it was, it was an absolute mess. Um, and it was only my, my ability to avoid him notice and avoid him as best as I did that that I'm still here along with my girlfriend today um it would have been 100 percent um fatality um and a big pile up as well at the same time so a couple of years ago I, I went through quite a lot and one of the main things that both me and, the, and my girlfriend suffered from regards our injuries were that we suffered a massive blow to the back of the head as you can imagine this 30 roughly 30, 35 ton truck smashing into the back of you at 52 miles per hour and I'm in a little Citroen C2, tiny little car, one little car, right? Um, there's not a lot of room to manoeuvre and that we, I, I had the back of my head cut open which needed a lot of stitches to put back together and um, my girlfriend, we say, received three basal um, skull fractures um, she also had fractures that affected the inner ear canal. Um, for those who don't know, the, the ear canal, which on, not only helps with hearing but balance, um, is actually within si uh, inside the skull, not on the outside. This isn't really the ear. You can still hear when if you were to cut this off. Um, it's just your field of vision would be a bit less. So, so this is just like a sort of almost like an antenna on a TV. It lets you hear a little bit more sort of range of sounds, but um, really the the sound comes from inside the skull. So whenever you fracture the skull, you always ri potentially risk your your senses of sight, taste, and and hearing ultimately, um, as well as obviously complete brain death. <laughs> um, now, um, my girlfriend was made deaf by the by the uh, by the crash, and I thought I'd gotten off fairly lightly regards to the blow to the back of my head because even though I was suffering from you know um, symptoms such as amnesia, um, for example, and I forgot what else, um, uh, travel anxiety, post PT PT. SD and, and uh, you know all the rest of it the whole you know the list goes on um, m most of my injuries were really just the big gash to the back of the head and my paralyzed thumb so I seem to have got off quite lightly however it seems I'm going to I've booked in to see the doctor this week um, Thursday this week so I'll give you an update then um, if I can um, if I have time um, and if they have answers because of course things you don't always get answers straight away, especially in Britain with the NHS. You you tend to get answers weeks, if not months later, if not years. But we'll at least start the, the wheel turning. But I'm going to see the doctor to ask them that the blow to the back of my head, has it affected my inner ear? Um, not regard to hearing. My ability to hear is is perfectly fine. No different to before the crash. You know, I'm an honest man. You know, I'm not on. You know, um, I'm not going to lie about false symptoms. But um, since the crash, my balance has been terrible. Um, now, of course, at first you just simply discount it as simply concussion or disorientation or the amnesia, the confusion, things like this. Um, but as time has gone on, um, I've had some several major falls. Now, I'm a martial arts instructor. Um, I'm physically fit. I've done rugby. 
boxing, as I say, a variety of different martial arts. Um, I don't know if I said weightlifting as well in there. Um, so, you know, I'm someone who is physically in touch with their body, you know, knows eye-to-hand coordination, so to speak. I mean, I played football at school, you know, and stuff like this. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm more, that's a soccer to you Americans. Um, but, you know, I'm more than capable of knowing when my body's not in tune, you know, and when it is in tune. And, and I try, train six times a week, you know, I train hard. Um, and so when my body's telling me that there's something wrong, chances are there's probably something wrong. Um, and really, I, you start noticing it, you know, months and months ago, and you just discount it. That's the problem. You discount things initially. When I'll be talking to people, I'd suddenly start sort of swaying a little bit to the right normally um and or to the left it didn't really matter but normally to the right and and i'd kind of almost like kind of almost trip myself over even though i'm standing still talking to them having a conversation i would kind of lean over and, and lose my balance and i'd kind of have to re reposture re 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 rebalance myself um and after that i've also um uh you know, um, what being found that I've been very clumsy, like I've been sort of as I'm walking, I kind of tend to edge to one direction more than another. It's hard for me to walk in a straight line. Um, so I, so I tend to walk into walls and sometimes people on the street as well, which is embarrassing to be honest. Um, it's not something that I want to do, especially the size and I am, and with you know all the tattoos and that, you might think I'm doing it on purpose, but I'm not. Um, I I really do not have control over where I'm going, and obviously, I've also noticed it in the gym. Um, when I do my balance training, which is daily, okay, to improve my balance, um, and to improve the strength of the muscles involved in maintaining balance and developing balance um such so, as so the hip uh, the muscles around the hip and the leg and the and the glutes and the, and the lower back and stuff and the core muscles um i found that my left side's always it, it's not really progressing it it seems to be every time i lift my left leg off the ground i'm always really struggling to you know I'm, i've got that wobbly syndrome which i used to have you know I mean, I've been doing boxing now since I was five, so 25 years ago, you know. It feels like I'm back to square one 25 years ago almost. I'm trying to improve upon it. I'm trying to develop it, and it's really difficult, and it's worrying because obviously I want to go into um, amateur fighting um, and and some professional fighting in it as an MMA fighter. And if I can't have a solid um, stance... Um, then I'm going to find myself thrown down to the ground or kicked um, without the ability to defend myself. Um, um, I'm going to find it very difficult, you know. Um, it's going to do a lot of damage to me. So it's something that I need to really look at. So I'm going to go get the doctors to go look at that. But in the meantime, what I'm going to be doing, because now I feel fairly vulnerable, and that's unusual for a man of my size and strength and my martial arts capacity and so on and so forth to to to, to what you know to admit put his hands up and admit i feel vulnerable um is is in is it, it hurts the pride right and the reason why i feel vulnerable is i've had two major falls since those two years i've had i've had about half a dozen falls but two really major falls where i'm surprised i've come out without broken bones like seriously the first one i was just walking um out the patio door where we used to live and i just fell off the top of the, the off the, the stairs no, no reason there's not much to trip on i was just walking there and i think i stood still for a second and i just went to the left just went and i must have fell about four foot um into straight into concrete um, it winded me, hurt, hurt a lot, you know, but, but, you know, I'll shrug off the damage, it's not a problem, you know, a couple of cuts here and there, that didn't really matter, um, and I just thought it was just one of those things, you know, sometimes you just lose your balance, right, um, but then, yesterday, I nearly broke my ankle, and I may have actually broken my ankle, I'm not sure, I really don't want to go down to hospital, because, 
I've obviously my girlfriend's experiences at hospital, my own experience at the hospital. Last time I was in hospital for myself was the day of the car crash, and I really don't want to go there um, because it doesn't bring back the best of memories. Um, and of course, I still do go back there, obviously, when my girlfriend has operations and needs picking up most of the time it's her mother who does that but sometimes I visit her or you know if another family member is ill I'll go visit them but I'm having to wear I don't know if I can show you a special compression um uh sort of <coughs> stocking I suppose you could describe it as but it's a sort of sportswear um compression stocking that I can wear on both sides of my feet um uh, because they're not super, super tight, but they essentially are an extra layer of ligaments, um, and they help keep the foot together. Now, with that, I'm just about able to walk, but yesterday, I couldn't even stand, when, when I, because what happened was, um, I was uh, walking outside again, um, going from out, in, inside to outside, and I f- just fell out of the conservatory, for no reason, um, didn't trip, over anything that I know of um, and there were plenty of witnesses there and they just saw me fly um, and my, Lauren was sat in, in front of me on, on, on like a concrete ridge that, that that's uh, uh, outside the uh, the door of the conservatory and I threw my, kind of threw myself to the left um, you know you can kind of direct your fall can't you you know um, when you're falling um, because the last thought, thing I thought is I don't want to land on her, 18 stone, um, travelling at half a decent pace and landing a bad leg, which she's just had an operation on, and break it again or put her back, you know, several stages or just hurt her in general. Just even hitting her somewhere where she's not been hurt. I could I could really hurt her, you know. Um, it would cost her a fall for me, but instead I ended up landing straight on back on again the... Uh, <laughs> the cobbled floor, the, the the concrete floor, whatever it's made out of. I mean, it's got a sort of brick brick floor, um, brick like cobbled like floor. Um, now that impact onto the floor was not what hurt me. What hurt me was that I had my foot um, as I as I fell um, went into almost like a ballerina position, and I had all the pressure of my body weight to try and avoid Lauren, who was in front of me. Um, to try and twist myself to the left, I ended up with my all my weight in on my foot in almost like a ballerina position, so on my toes. Um, and I had sturdy work boots on. I had still toe cap boots on, so with full ankle support and everything. So if I didn't have that, I probably would have a snapped ankle. Now, um, oh, they do protect you quite a bit, uh, and I ended up falling straight to the left. <coughs> And I just felt my foot just keep twisting and twisting as I, as I went down. And I hit the ground and I remember the pain was severe. It was severe immediately. Burning pain. Um, and there, were, there was swelling. We put ice on it immediately. And um, I put, um, I being a powerlifter, I have powerlifting straps, that you, uh, knee wraps, you know. Um, I went and, and put them around the ankle to act as a compression stocking essentially and um, to prevent further swelling and to also keep everything together basically to allow me to walk. <coughs> I was then given uh, one of Lauren's crutches. Um, luckily she, I mean, she had an electric wheelchair so it didn't really matter. Um, but inside the house I needed a crutch and I needed full, full, um, very, very powerful and very strong support around the ankle basically a cast, a homemade cast, around the ankle to be able to stand, not alone walk. And I was hobbling all over the place. I was I was, I was unable to get off the ground if I went onto the ground um, and, and things like this. So the point that I'm getting to... <laughs> I've taken 15 minutes to get to the point. The point what I've done is, is despite being a 30-year-old, I must admit, as a 30 year old, the last thing I want to do is have a walking stick. It one, walking sticks are associated more often than not with old men or people who are severely terminally ill or, you know, very severely ill. Um, or like Lauren, who have had, you know, got broken legs and things like this, right? 
I don't have any of that, I hope, <laughs> you know, my ankle isn't broken, um, but I am going to get a walking stick, and I'm, I'm, I've ordered one already, so I hope it gets here as soon as possible, I'm buying a walking stick um, that um, is going to make me feel more stable on my feet, having three legs is better than two, in theory, you know, it gives me something to plant my weight on if I need to, if I feel like I'm swaying, I can I can try and regain my balance a little bit better with the walking stick that I've ordered. <coughs> okay, it's quite a, quite a, a good one um, by Cold Steel. Um, it's their walking stick, one of their speciality ranges. Um, and uh, so I've just put air freshener in, in the room and it's doing murder with my lungs. <coughs> Um, but, but, um, did, did I see myself at the age of 30 having to have, having to, it's not a choice now. I know it's a necessity because, because if I fall again, I could fall into the road and get run over. I could fall into someone, um, a random, you know, passerby and seriously hurt them. If I land on top of someone, especially if they're an older person or frail at themselves, I'll crush them, okay? Or I could just fall and hit my head on the concrete or break my leg or break my hip. And when I'm in essentially responsible position for Lauren, who, who all in intents and purposes is, is a cripple anyway, you know, being in a wheelchair. I know that word's not like to be used, but, you know, we say it as it is, you know, um, she's in a wheelchair, she, 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 she cannot, you know, she can walk a little bit in the house, but, but minimal amounts, and she needs crutches when she does, and, and lots of support, well, I don't want to be in that position too, because I can't help her, if she falls at full strength with my foot, feet and my legs, my ankles, my bones, all in good condition, I can always pick her up, I can always support her, I can always drive her down to the hospital, you understand, but if my ankle's messed up, I can't press the clutch, so I can't drive her down to the hospital. I'd have to get an ambulance or another family member um, to come pick her up. Um, and to, uh, as well as this, you know, you know, I, I would just feel severely guilty about hurting her if I fell into her. She's fragile, and if I fell into her, you know, or or, or injured myself in a way that I couldn't support her, and that then made her then fall over because she didn't have me there to support her again as I say I would feel incredibly guilty about that because I feel responsible for her so I've taken it as I say as um not a desire I'm very much against it I don't really want it but as a necessity that I am now going to walk for the foreseeable future I can't see any change um, unless it's balanced, you know, like the ENT doctors can have a look and go, oh, yeah, there's something wrong there and we can fix it, which I doubt they'll be able to do. They might find something wrong, but I doubt they'll be able to fix it. Um, what, I'll, what I'm going to do for the foreseeable f future to the end of my days now is walk with a walking stick from the age of 30. I feel a bit gutted about it, to be honest. I mean, I can train and stuff like this. I'm, I'm a martial arts instructor. I'm physically healthy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not trying to say life shit or anything. But at the same time, um, out in the street, walking with a walking stick at, at the age of 30, it makes you feel like people are going to judge you. Because one thing I will say is when I was... first time I walked with Lauren in her wheelchair... Um, and was, we were pushing her around, I think it was before she had an electric wheelchair, um, or maybe when, when she got her first electric wheelchair, she went out for her first sort of go. The number of people I noticed staring at her, looking at her and then looking at me because I was with her and stuff, people stare, it's natural. People stare and they wonder, they wonder what the story is behind it all. They don't mean it maliciously or nastily or anything like this. Um, but people are like, oh my God, look, look at her. I'm glad I'm not her. I don't want to be a pity job, you know? I don't want people pitying me or going, bloody hell, I'm sorry. Sorry that you uh, need a walking stick at such a young age, you know, and all the rest of it. I don't want that and I don't want it the other way as well, where people are thinking that I'm doing it for attention, 
to try and take it away from Lauren. You'd have to be twisted in the head to think that, right? I'm doing that out of necessity. Um, but I really do not feel stable on my feet anymore. Um, my left side, especially, my balance is horrendous um, compared to how it used to be. It's still good compared to most people's, perhaps, um, but it is ho horrendous um, most of the time, at least. But but it has moments where it can cause serious injury. Uh, and I'm sick of falling. I'm sick of being in pain. I'm sick of having to, you know... Um, use my medical skills that I used that I learned in med school to treat myself um, you know and check for broken bones and torn ligaments and things like this just because I'm falling over sometimes as I say from great heights or in an awkward position or things like this and I, I'm just, just sick of it I'm sick of it so I would rather bear the burden of having a walking stick um, than bear the burden of of fear, I suppose. It's not fear, but anticipation, you know, that, that anxiety that you would have of going out. I would feel I'd be I'd be fearful of not even going out around the house even. I fall fall over in the house. I fall into walls and doors and stuff. Um it's something that I need to to, to 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 do something about and it's something that's only really became apparent now really because it's been there but it's only been noticeable since I nearly broke my ankle um, and so obviously it, it shows you just how you know even though it's been two years you're still discovering injuries that your body has sustained. Whether they find anything inside the ears or not, my balance has definitely been affected, 100%. This could ruin my potential uh, chances at being a uh, an MMA fighter. You never know. I'm ho hopefully not because, you know, I'm a, better, I'm a good boxer, so I'll just box more than I kick, you know. But it will put me at a disadvantage when it comes to the wrestling, the grappling, the kicking, you know, to some degree. Um, even though, as I say, I do work on it every day. And I suppose that's my one thing that I do have going for me. One, I'm accepting that I've got something wrong with me and that I need to do something on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is get a walking stick. And secondly, um, I'm, I'm, I'm... I'm, 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 I am dealing with, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to improve it on a daily basis. I train, um, I'm, I'm developing as much musculature and strength as possible around my joints. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm working on my balance and improving my balance as best as possible. Um, and that's it really, you know? Um, so I've got to swallow my pride. Um, and walk around with a walking stick, as I say. Um, now, one way that I've counted it, Cold Steel do a walking stick that is very modern looking, in my opinion. It's a sort of Victorian style gentleman's cane sort of thing. So it's a it's a walking stick that's fully functional, uh, made out of fiberglass and has an aluminium head, if I remember correctly. Um, it's at the height that I sort of need it as well. Um, so you gotta make sure it's at the right height for you. Um, and it's described as being almost unbreakable because, of course, with my body weight, I, I when I was using Lawrence crutches, which are made out of, I assume, aluminium, um, but, but some kind of metal, you know, the NHS uh, version of the crutches, I could feel them bending under my weight a little bit, you know, they, they wouldn't, uh, they weren't going to snap, it was obvious they weren't going to snap, but it, you're conscious that your weight is, is, is definitely being felt by the crutches, and, and if I was using two crutches at the same time, well, there's twice the amount of crutch, but also there's all my weight going into it at that point. Um, and so I thought I wanted to get a good quality walking stick, one that will last a lifetime, uh, one that looks good, um, because and that's important. It might sound vain, but it look it's it's it's, it's important because I'm a thirty year old man. I'm quite I wouldn't say fashionable, but I'm 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 into no, I'm not even into my appearance, but I as I say I don't want to be seen as an old man. And so having a cane that is young in its design, um, and 
potentially fashionable in its design is is something that is is of added value i mean i would not walk with a walking stick if or be forced to walk with a walking stick if it was what my granddad used i remember what my granddad used when he had emphysema and i don't want to be reminded of that i want something new and potentially a talking point you know turn a frown upside down you know go well yeah my legs a bit my balance all is all, is all messed up mate but you know i get to carry this cool stick with me <laughs> you know what i mean so that, that that that's where i'm going with it but i thought i'd update you guys for those of you who care about obviously my progression of injuries um and also for obviously how that might impact on my fighting um in the ring um and also um my training as a whole um i will have to take at least a week if not two weeks off training guys because my ankle is in a lot of pain and i'm in a lot of painkillers at the moment you can probably see it in my eyes i'm in a lot of agony a lot of pain and so um um i forgot what i was gonna say my amnesia is kicking in so i'm what i'm just gonna do guys is i'm gonna end the video there thank you very much for watching um, um, put whatever you want in the comments, feel free. Um, I'm a talkative guy. I love to have a community here on the house of Devlin and it's developing. The community is developing. There's a lot of people out there who, who, who are, who are listening. Um, and it doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with whatever I say on any of my videos, always feel free to contribute to, to, to a debate because debate is always a good thing. You know, freedom of speech. Yeah. All right then guys, I've said enough. Bye-bye.